Hello, good morning, happy Monday. I have been doing a tarot reading for myself at the start of the week, and I felt called last week to share it with my spiritual community, but this week I'm thinking just share it on YouTube with anyone who happens upon this. So if you're just flipping through the algorithm and you find this, this message is for you. And if you're a homie and you're listening to this, I recommend that whatever feels good to you, whatever resonates with you, you take that and whatever messages don't make any sense, leave them, drop them. All right, I'm using three decks today. These are the decks that I work with and I love them so much. Um, we have, this is the first deck I ever bought, Alana Fairchild's White Light Oracle deck. Also Alana Fairchild's Kali Oracle. I love it. And Sahara Rose's Yogic Path. Ah. So let's get into it. I will bless the decks first. And I suggest and offer that you take three deep breaths with me and set an intention For me, if, if you want an example, my intention will be that the cards I pull have <laughs> have the, the message required for us to hear for our highest good. I like doing highest good readings because <laughs> what's better than that, right? <laughs> so I just take it straight up to source, spirit, God, just whatever whatever message you need us to hear for our highest good. So I'm gonna take three deep breaths now. Blue Dada. Thank you, love. We will set this down and we'll read the uh, from the guidebook after I draw the cards. the back of the whole deck it's beta of spirit wolf boom let's check it out and since those um oracle cards have like a longer read um and the yogic path cards have a shorter read i usually pull three of these
Ooh, let's see what we got. First card is Anahata in reverse, which is the heart chakra. Oh, yeah. Okay. Second card is Niyamas. Love the art on these. And the last card is Kafa in reverse. So let's check it out as I sip on some coffee. I am doing a water fast today. Well, not a complete water fast. I'm drinking coffee, but just black coffee, herbal tea, and water. Also, blue tada. Blue tada. Okay, I'll leave it here. Blue tada. Sweet mother of peace, now bestows her gifts of clarity, peace, and the power to overcome any negative condition. Just as the beautiful lotus grows from muddied waters, so too shall you arise from confusion, difficult circumstances, and heavy energies into sacred blossoming. If you feel held back or slowed down by your circumstances, remember that your soul has the ability to process all experiences and become stronger, not weaker, through doing so. The oracle indicates healing and a positive prediction for a peaceful future. Nice. Que bueno. Second of the Mahavidya wisdom goddesses is the goddess Tara. Represented by her many colors, Tara manifests in unlimited forms to accomplish whatever task is required to support the spiritual liberation of all beings. Tara can be Saumya, gentle, kind, and comforting like the moon. She can be Ugra Tara, fierce defender against extreme negativities, wrathful and fearsome. Her multiple forms remind us of the unending resourcefulness of the Divine Mother. It is taught that Tara will manifest in whatever form is required for the protection of spiritual aspirants. Tara is the Divine Mother's enlightened activity. Sometimes we subconsciously switch off from divine assistance by limiting what we think is possible for spiritual energy to influence and manifest. The Oracle asks you to challenge such spirit-limiting beliefs to empower divine assistance in your life. Tibetan Buddhist doctrine teaches that Tara loves us all as her one child. There is a significance to this that is freeing. In the realm of ego, we see ourselves and others as either allied or at war. The ego thinks, you're either with me or against me. And battle ensues. For the peace-loving heart, there is no joy in such a way of being. It creates anxiety, distress, and fear, which steals the power, love, and hopefulness from the heart. When we acknowledge that Dara loves us all as her one child, rather than as her many children, it gives us permission to receive fully without guilt. It gives us leave to not lose faith if another appears to be unjustly gaining the upper hand, because we can remember in our hearts that we are all loved and treasured equally. And I feel called to share, if you don't resonate with the image or the deity of Dara, which in my mind, this is a representation, of, like an aspect of God, the one infinite creator, which is both masculine and feminine, everything that is beyond anything we can even imagine. Imagine her as a representation of the feminine aspect of that one creator, and that one creator loves you unconditionally. We are all that one child. So continuing on. No matter what appears to be, there is no such thing as privilege at a spiritual level. We are all in this together and what happens within one being affects all. We can only grow, heal and awaken together in entirety. There will be some who have the capacity to move ahead of the curve. They will be supported in doing so. Yet they are no more important than those struggling to find the path. 
This does not mean that those with more advanced capabilities should martyr themselves to the lower frequency of their spiritual brothers and sisters or give up attempting to make individual progress. The more progress we make on our spiritual journey, the more benefit we ultimately bring to the collective because we are all connected. You cannot choose who will be able to acknowledge and support your spiritual path nor how the benefits will reach others. Some will be able to receive a direct and immediate benefit. Others will not have that capacity. Yet even if they, and you, cannot see how they can benefit as you make progress on your spiritual path, you can assume it is happening nonetheless. Blue-skinned Tara represents the element of spaciousness. Creating space in our lives opens us up to grace. You can only receive what you create room for. Mm. Blue Dada reminds us to continually clear the way for grace. That can require letting go of mental clinging and emotional distress and becoming open to positive outcomes, no matter how unlikely or inaccessible they may sometimes seem to be. We do not accomplish this by denying or ignoring thoughts and feelings, but by practicing reassurance and dropping into trust. It is a spiritual art. Sometimes it will be easier to practice than at other times. Yet in shifting from distrust to trust again and again, we learn the pattern. We learn to drop from our head into our heart. We learn to empower Tara's grace in our lives for the spiritual benefit of all beings. Unlike Kali's wild and free hair, Kali, Tara's is carefully coiled. This represents her gift of gently taming the wild spirit and providing us with careful, patient, and loving steps to bring ourselves back to peace and empowerment. If you have been feeling out of control of yourself or situations you felt incapable of positively influencing, the Oracle of Blue Tara brings comfort. Chaos will give way to the correct, higher order of love. Let there be peace in your heart. As she looks to her right, Gazing toward the future, the gift of this oracle is a prediction of a peaceful, protected, and authentically expressive future drawing close to you now. You have every right to feel hopeful, happy, and secure in your future destiny unfolding. Yeah! That's nice. That sounds good, huh? Thank you. Coffee break. Man, that's a lot of smoke. <laughs> This is one of my favorite incenses. Song of India. I love this. Smells just like temples in India. I've never been, but, well, not in this life, but man, it smells good. Can you smell it? <laughs> okay, I feel called to do the yogic path cards now and then we'll end with the white light so boom 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 we'll go in order we got anahata but in reverse the other cards don't have like a reverse reading anahata the heart chakra I'll put it up right so that y'all can see it. Like, love this design. A heartbreak is holding you back from your truth and the time has come to forgive. Your heart carries an intelligence and when you close your heart, you are not able to operate as your full self. To follow your path, it is essential to heal the old wounds of the heart. Repeat the mantra, please forgive me, I forgive you. I thank you. I love you. Repeat these words using the names of every person who needs love, forgiveness, and gratitude. Each heartbreak carries a divine spiritual lesson, and you can hold on to the lesson while letting go of the pain. Honor the soul contract for what it taught you and pave the way open for your heart to love again. Practice tantric eye gazing and meditating on the heart space and spend time in green nature. And uh, another thing to add, the mantra there, please forgive me, I forgive you, I thank you, I love you, is 
the uh, ancient Hawaiian uh, forgiveness prayer, Ho'oponopono, which, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I recommend if that, if that calls out to you, definitely look it up, Hawaiian forgiveness prayer, Ho'oponopono. That's the first card. Now we have Niyamas. All right, Niyamas. In the eight stages of yoga, the laws of personal observance. You are beginning to reap the rewards of the inner transformational work you have done. This is just the beginning of a lifelong practice of personal observance. Tune into what your soul needs at this moment. Are there toxins in your body and mind that need sauka, purity? Are you experiencing contentment, santosha, for all the blessings you've been given? Are you using your tapas, disciplined energy, to take you toward your dharma, divine purpose? Continue the practice of svadhyaya, self-study. There is always more that you will find when you open up the pathway to your true spirit. Take some extra time for yourself each day to practice Ishvara Pranidhana, the celebration and contemplation of spirit. This is one of the uh, the three doshas. Okay, the earthy dosha, grounding, nurturing, and heavy. Has the earth energy left you feeling heavy? It's time to shake out of your kapha rut. You may have gotten too comfortable where you are, your home, your career, your relationships, your life goals. Try something out of the box. See bigger dreams for yourself. Let go of habits that are no longer serving you, such as emotional eating or looking back into the past. Replace refined carbs, sugar, and dairy with bitter vegetables, tart fruit, and rich spices. It's time to shed your old skin and reemerge as your highest self and fullest expression. Thank you. Now, lastly, from the White Light Oracle deck, we've got Beta of Spirit Wolf. Let me do this. Switch it up. Give yourself enough rest. Only then will you be able to ground yourself enough to cultivate focus and motivation to fulfill your path. You will find a way through any tricky situation as you tune into your instincts and trust your own timing. From times of change and uncertainty comes confidence, love, and resilience. Embrace transition, commit to your tasks, and stay focused, but be flexible in your approach. You have the skill to intuitively handle any issue. Spirit Wolf skillfully guides us through transition and uncertainty. He enhances instinct, intuition, and presence so we can sense and avoid possible sabotage or traps and intelligently and safely find our way around them. Spirit Wolf tunes us into our instincts without creating paranoia or hyper arousal. This is the medicine of awareness and engagement that comes from tuning in without fear rather than from defensiveness, suspicion, and building walls against life. Where direct confrontation could stall a resolution or make matters worse, Spirit Wolf teaches us to soften our energy, appear less threatening, and therefore minimize the chance of the other party reacting aggressively out of fear. This enhances the possibility of resolution. 
Spirit Wolf calls for lunar wisdom, for honoring the non-rational knowing of intuition, for trusting our spiritual instincts and inner sense of timing. He is the unconventional yet reliable pathfinder. He shows us how to be flexible while remaining connected to our higher purpose. Beta of Spirit Wolf brings the message that your resourcefulness and capacity to meet your needs is greater than you realize. We have it within us to engage all situations with courage and willingness. We will always find a way through. As Spirit Wolf thrives in cheerful, playful social bonding with his tribe, there is also a reminder that connection is an essential ingredient in our approach to life. To thrive and have as much fun as the intelligent, playful, successful, adaptable, and resourceful wolf, we need love in our lives. To experience love, we must be willing to reach out, open up, and run the risk of letting love in, as well as to share it unconditionally, without thought for what we can get out of it, which would transform the beautiful gift of love into a manipulative tool of ego. Beta, brainwaves, oscillate between 14 hertz and 40 hertz. It is the pattern of our waking state when our alertness and reasoning are heightened. If our beta waves become excessive, it can be challenging to transition into more relaxed states, and the result is increased stress. Stress is a significant problem for the human collective, and the negative impact on our health and our planet is considerable. It is easier for a relaxed mind to access clarity and inspiration. Beta waves are stimulating, and while heightened arousal is beneficial in small doses at appropriate times, if this becomes our dominant way of being, our stress levels will compromise our well-being and our wisdom. The excess of anxiety, the excess of anxiety-related disorders affecting humanity at this time is one symptom of beta brain waves in overdrive. Beta helps us get things done, but imbalanced. It disconnects us from the nourishing, sacred, feminine presence within the heart that generates contentment. Beta excess is progress at any cost. Beta deficiency results in lack of focus and inattention to what is happening, so problems are not readily solved. Spirit Wolf brings a healing recalibration of our beta waves so we can avoid depression and feel motivated, yet also know when to step back and reconnect to the slower healing rhythms of the heart and soul. Whee! Some really good messages today. Let's see. Let's see. What's a good way to like? See. Something like that. Yeah, so we can see all the cards. Blue Tara, Beta of Spirit Wolf, Kafa Niyamas, Anahata. Thank you for joining me today. This was a wonderful, beautiful reading. Let me see if I have any more messages. Trust yourself. You got this. And you're protected. You are loved and you are guided. I wish you a beautiful, blessed, abundant, amazing week. Namaste. <laughs>